Our very first live question is um, lukewarm is asking when is the new core hex motors going to come out or are there plans for one? Um, they're not this year. Um, you know, we always revisit our, revisit our, uh, our products a year over year, but our uh, core hex is uh, tried and true. It's going to stay the way it is for at least another season. All right. Pass modder asks, what are the bundles? So what are question. the bundles? Yep. What are the bundles? So um, I, I think this is a response to, you know, I, was to, I, I hang out in the FTC Discord from time to time. Um, basically, we're going to be offering some bundles. Um, I don't have an exact timeline on it, but it's going to be things like there'll be a channel bundle. There'll be, you know, ultra planetary um, is kind of a kit and bundle in itself. Um, we're working on some things like sensor bundles and cable bundles. Basically, um, you know, we now have we're, we're getting to a lot of parts. And so sometimes it's easier just to say, let me pre-select a couple of things together. And um, mm -hmm. so the bundles are coming soon, uh, but there will definitely be a, a, a channel bundle. Um, and um, we may even do some things like there may be a drivetrain kit coming soon too. So a little teaser. All right. All right. So next up we have FTC 3208 and FRC 568. Uh, they're asking, uh, about the ultra planetary gearbox. So what's the maximum gear ratio you can use without risking breaking the gearbox? And I think this was a question asked earlier too. Yeah, so um, within uh, three within three stages, uh, you can go to 125 to one, you should be just fine um, at 125 to one. Um, obviously because they stack, there's no theoretical limit on how many you could stack together. But when you, when you start to get into a lot more torque, um, you can break them. So, uh, we are working through a matrix of uh, destructive testing. Um, we know what we think the theoretical one is. We're trying to prove where to push the limits. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to put out a chart of kind of like what we consider to be safe ratios and ones where if you want to try, go for it. I mean, tech from a, if you stacked four, you can get up to 640 to one in four stages. <laughs> so, but I'm not saying that's the best idea. So, um, like I said, that's going to be part of the documentation that's coming soon. But um, they're 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 tough. So, all right. So, um, VNGLBRT001 asks, "What is your favorite or most sold Rev product?" What is my favorite or most sold Rev product? Oh, that's that's really really tough. Um, I I'm a robot guy, so like I. I geek out at like the little things. Um, I, I will say that like, and I know some people have seen me get kind of heated, but I, I really love our servo, um, our smart robot All servo. Right. Um, it's really just because as a mechanical engineer, the number of times I've seen programmers like struggle mm -hmm. to find that exact number to send it to, um, mm -hmm. like to get the right performance versus just like, hey, I'm going to set the limit. I'm going to set the limit. Like that's what drove the innovation on this. Um, and so... I love I love this one, but honestly, like they're all kind of like your babies, which is a weird <laughs> analogy. But like, <laughs> like we, I every single product that we we design takes a lot of time, effort, and it, it really becomes kind of part of you. So uh, we, I have a special place in my heart for all of them, but I do like the servo. Craig, all just right. a quick follow up: Did the uh, uh, servo price drop at all? Somebody just asked that. Yeah, in the chat. yeah. The uh, we we uh, we dropped the servo price, um, so. Standard price dropped, I think it was $5. And then also, um, this is a good time to plug this. Um, this year we are doing FTC team discounts. So if you're a registered FTC team, go to the storefront, um, you can click on, you can get 15% off um, a whole bunch of products. We're gonna be kind of uh, revolving what products maybe it are, is through the season, um, but there'll be some cores that are in there, the servos in there. So you can get a servo now for pretty close to 20 bucks. Wow. Awesome. All right, so our next question is from Adam, uh, 14875, again, from live chat. And today, and he's asking about the servos thing. He just said, have Greg talk about the servos thing. So I think, I think he's talking about the aluminum double servo arm, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, aluminum double servo arm, um, I actually, I, that's another one I don't have in front of me. Um, <laughs> we've always offered this metal um, round servo horn, um, which is great. It's threaded, it makes it easy. Um, We've been asked before, one of the biggest challenges teams have with our stuff is how do you attach extrusion to a servo? This is like, we get this question a lot. So that servo horn is designed for this. So you have two holes that are tapped. Um, so you can do it to attach to anything and two that are through holes, which allow you to 
put the screws in the slot and kind of bolt through to the bottom. And then there's enough clearance on the height of it so that the screws won't hit the body of the extrude. So if you've ever wanted to like take a rev extrusion and put it on a servo, like that's the, that's the servo horn for you. Wow. Nice. All right. Perfect. So, um, so, uh, do you, now do you have the data on the failure modes of the ultra planetary gearboxes like the Vex versa planetary gearboxes do? Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking, what, what they're asking for. Like, all right. Like what the, what um, the failure modes are. Um, I mean, all, all planetary transmissions uh, generally fail in the same way. Um, you uh, damage the sun gear um, on the stages or you damage the carrier plate. Like those are by far like the most common failures and from over torquing. So it's like pins over torque, the pins bend, sun breaks. Um, one of the reasons that we are only offering three to one, four to one and five to one as transmission stages is that they're significantly stronger. Um, like mm -hmm. the Vex versus Planetary is actually a great product, but when mm -hmm. you go up into those nine to one, 10 to ones, your sun gear gets so small that if you exceed load ratings, you're just gonna snap them. So uh, by keeping right. the lower ratios, you can, the, the gearboxes inherently stay stronger throughout all the stages. Wow. All right, perfect. All right, so next up, we have a question from, uh, again, from FTC, uh, 3208 and FRC 568, and they're asking, uh, is the ultraplanetary encoded, or do you need an external encoder for the? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the ultraplanetary gearbox. Yeah, so the ultraplanetary does not have an encoder in it. Um, mm -hmm. Every motor that we offer, like our our HD hex for FTC, has an encoder on the motor already. And then mm -hmm. if and if you want something that's closer to the actuator, because it's five millimeter hex everywhere, the um, new through bore encoder. Uh, through hex encoder will mm -hmm. you can put that on the other end of it so it's not integrated but there's easy ways to put an encoder in the in the rest of the system nice all right thank you so uh will you have adapter parts that would allow vex components like the ultra planetary and mechanum wheels to work with other build systems uh sure so um we mm -hmm. already have so all of our mechanum wheels ship with a uh so the mechanum wheels themselves, and let me turn on my little thing real fast. Uh, here we go. So if you'll notice the pattern in the middle of this, this is not our standard pattern. Um, this mm -hmm. picks up kind of the same eight millimeter four pin as um, every system out there has an adapter plate that will work here already. So you probably, if you, if you build with Tetrix, one of your regular Tetrix hubs will already fit here. If you have Andy Mark nubs, they'll fit here. If you have um, any of mm -hmm. our, uh, universal hex adapters or anything like that they'll fit here already um when it comes to working with some of the vex pro stuff and start talking about five uh half inch hex or three eighths hex that's a little bigger than the center hole you might have to do some stuff yourself but if uh the inventiveness of teams is uh always outstanding so <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you should be able to uh figure out a way to make these work for you all right perfect nice so the next question we have is from david recharged and he's asking, what is the color sensor V3? Right. So uh, the color sensor V3 is the next iteration of our color sensor. If you have our, our V1 or V2, uh, the short answer is it works pretty much the same. Uh, the electronic component that we used in the V2 got discontinued. Uh, we learned this about 18 months ago. So we bought a lot of those parts to try to get them um, as far as we can. But we finally mm -hmm. ran out of stock of those. So uh, the natural evolution is to go to the V3. Um, you will be able to treat the V2 and V3 almost the same. Uh, it does require you to be running the latest version of the FTC SDK and select color sensor V3 because there is a software change there. But mm -hmm. from a sensor like reliability, it's the same color sensor everybody's been used to. You'll get similar performance. Nice. All right, perfect. So. Uh, 12897 Nate Less asked, when designing the mechanum wheel, was there any concern about the added weight of a steel frame? So I think that, that th there is a concern. Um, one of the things I can tell you is that the reason that Rev products are generally low, they, they are more cost efficient, um, mm -hmm. is because of the manufacturing method. And okay. so um, you can do things with stamped steel and forming that you just mm -hmm. can't do with aluminum. You cannot do deep draws like this out mm -hmm. of aluminum. Mm -hmm. So there was a concern about weight, um, but 
the manufacturing ability and the ability for us to provide these as low cost as we can to teams for the quality of them kind of outweighed mm -hmm. the weight. Um, what I will say though, is that because it is a smaller wheel, like you're not heavier than the four inch options. So you're mm -hmm. probably saving a little weight in the end. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was something we talked about, but this is now basically the low, one of the lowest cost mechanum wheels that people can have. And it's definitely the lowest cost with bearings. Um, you know, the, uh, when it talks about mechanum, and I, I want to say this, this is, this will come out in our report when we, when we launch it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a date on that, but I'm, we're going to, we're trying um, to format um, the, how good a mechanum wheel is, is very much related to the ratio of diameter to the number of rollers. Um, okay. And that's, that's basically like, if you think about it, it an infinite ratio of one would be just a wheel, right? You know, mm -hmm. like infinite number of rollers and a thing. So this roll, this one has eight rollers at 75 millimeters versus most other people have nine rollers at hundred millimeters. So we actually have a slightly better ratio of roller mm -hmm. smoothness and that shows in kind of its performance. So there's always trade-offs here. Um, Believe me, you know, I think one of the biggest ones is that like, if you have to step over a lip like this, or you have to climb a balancing stone, obviously a three inch or 75 millimeter wheel is not gonna be as good as a four inch, but a four inch mm -hmm. is not gonna be as good as a six inch. So <laughs> it, they're all trade-offs. We're really happy with where this turned mm -hmm. out. And we think teams will, um, will like it also. Awesome. And do you have an actual number on the weight? Of the mechanisms? Um, I, I think it's on the, I don't know if it's on the website. If it's not on the website, it is, is it there? Yeah, it's there. So it says on the side 179 grams for a single wheel without the universal hex adapter. There you go. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> All right, next question. So next up we have, uh, lukewarm again. He's asking about how do the ultra slides um, compare to the Misumis, and I'm assuming he's talking about the Misumi Star 240s or the Star 310s. Yep. So uh, they compare uh, people who have used the uh, Star, the Star uh, Mitsumi ones will uh, be pretty happy with what uh, the ultra slides are. Um, we can try to do a kind of direct comparison, but I mean, something like that was a really good inspiration for us as we were doing ultra slide. So nice. All right. And can the ultra slide be cut to shorter lengths? And this is from FTC 3208 and FRC 568. So the answer to that is not easily. Um, okay. So it's it's like a drawer slide, right? So it's it, um, mm -hmm. similar. So you could cut the like extension bits, right? So like you can make it go, but reducing the whole length is not easy. That's one of the reasons that we're offering two lengths. Um, our standard 420 that lines up with some of our extrusion, which is really close to like the 18 inch, it's like 17 um, in that. And then we're also offering a shorter one um, kind of for that reason. But no, it's not really designed to be cut. Mm. All right. Um, and then Pathbotter asks, what is the processor and speed as well as memory on the control hub? Oh, this is where, um, so <laughs> all, always a tough one. So we, we uh, transitioned to a, a rock chip SOC. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a slightly different one than what we were previously running with a Qualcomm uh, uh, Snapdragon. But the uh, processor itself is a, uh, it's a uh, quad core a ARM A54 processor. Um, I honestly, off the top of my head, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. It's either one or two gigs of RAM. Um, I don't want to say the wrong thing, uh, but it is a rock chip processor. It's, it's a quad core processor. It's got a dedicated GPU. It's pretty nice. Um, and as more teams get to use it, hopefully in future seasons, you will, uh, teams will appreciate uh, the performance of it. Dang. Mm -hmm. All right. So speaking of the control hub, Odyssey from uh, Odyssey is asking if you're in one of the pilot regions for the control hub, uh, would it be con would it continue to be legal at even the world championship level? Yes. So first has come out and the way the pilot works this year is if you're in one of the regions, which is, I think, New Jersey, New Hampshire, North Texas, and uh, Los Angeles, um, mm -hmm. also uh, the United Kingdom and uh, Romania, um, you will be able to use that control hub all the way through, through world championship. Perfect. Awesome. All right. And then uh, Josie Bobel uh, asks for, uh, Greg, what did you think of the lights on a robot at world? Uh, 6832. I, I, I'm going to say I honestly don't remember this specific robot, but I <laughs> love lights. 
I'm sorry. I mean, like, I, I, I am sure that I came to your pit because I make it a point to go to every pit at every world championship. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm sure I saw it. And like every robot at world champs at that level, every robot's pretty darn awesome. So, oh, yeah. um, if, if you've got, if you've got bling, like I, I love bling, right? Like put lights on your robots, please put lights on your robots. Um, you don't even have to use blinking just to do it, but, but put, put lights on your robots. It looks cool. All right. All right. Real, real quick. Odyssey wanted to shout out. Uh, he just said that he wanted to say that barbecue is elite and he met them earlier and he said that they were really nice and helpful. Thanks, man. All right. So Ishan 45 asks, will the Ultra USB Hub have USB Type-C support? So the Ultra Hub does not have USB Type-C support right now. Um, okay. We, we have looked at, uh, we may make a Type-C cable for it. Um, because you can swap the cable set on the uh, on the input side, but mm-hmm. it will still be USB 2.0 just with a Type C connector if we make that adapter cable. But right now, because of the utilization and where we really see this going, um, it's going to be micro USB and uh, USB A on the input side. Awesome. All right. So next up, uh, Krishfin. He's asking uh, in testing if you know how much will the noise be with the new Rev encoders. How much will the noise be with the new Rev encoder? I think it'll be like super loud. Oh no, no, no. Oh, you're talking about like physical noise. So yeah. the uh the 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 through the through encoders are ball bearing supported, so there's actually two ball bearings on the output shaft. They will be dead quiet. Um it should not add any excess load to your shaft. Um and you're not they're not gonna add any noise to your system at all. Oh wow. Okay. And right. they're, and they're, then- they're they're very smooth. Like if you hold one, they're almost like you can treat them like a fidget spinner. Like you can, <laughs> like they're very smooth. And then what about just uh, noise coming in from like surrounding sources, like when relating to the code and encod- encoder counts? Um, you shouldn't see that. Um, it is the, the, what we're doing on the inside is a, uh, it's a very high end uh, chip that does the mm-hmm. decoding and it's protected from noise. I mean, obviously like if you put this like right next to your giant motor, and like buried deep mm-hmm. underneath cables and under your battery and whatever. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you have to put a little bit of, of thought into where they go maybe, but mm-hmm. we don't expect them to, they will definitely outperform any of the existing encoders on any of the existing motors um, in FTC. That's for sure. Just want to follow right. up, uh, Chris Fine, just to clarify that said they did mean data noise. Data yeah. noise. I mean, no one wants a loud encoder though, right? Like, I mean... <laughs> So right. I also I also wanted to add to that a little bit. So on those encoders, uh, do you know how like how well they read uh, through like dust and stuff like that? Because I know some of the previous encoders have had trouble with that. Yep. So um, so just tell you what's going on inside that encoder. So um, the through bore is surrounded by two sealed bearings. Okay. So on the inside of it, there's a small gear set, and then that gear set is using a uh, magnetic um, non-contact um, non-contact for the actual positioning. So there's not a lot of susceptibility to dust and debris in there. Um, obviously, like if you dunk it in a bucket of sand, <laughs> you're probably not going to have a good time. But they should be pretty resilient. Um, to be very frank, we designed uh, that encoder with FRC drivetrain applications in mind. Um, my FRC team 2714, we actually ran um, our own team version of the prototype this entire past season. So we've got an entire season sitting on an FRC robot running around like that um, on what iterated into this product. So I, I would not be too concerned, um, but maybe don't take your robot off-roading on the beach if you're, <laughs> really, if you're really concerned with your odometry sensors, right? Like, All right. And then uh, Gymnast5044 asks, are there any possibilities of different color rollers for the mechanic wheels? Uh, not this year. Um, okay. there's always, there's always possibilities for different colors. <laughs> um, one of the challenges that as vendors have, and I think they'll probably, you'll probably, will probably get disappointed by other vendors too, is, um, it's an inventory problem, right? So like mm-hmm. when you stock every time, like we've got hundreds of products. If we made every one of those products in seven different colors, we would now <laughs> have like seven times the amount of inventory to keep. And we don't know if we're going to sell a ton of red or blue or green or whatever. So um, Mm -hmm. not this year. Um, We do, speaking of color, we do actually have a black extrusion this year. 
Um, so this is 15 millimeter black, but the, the we're probably going to stay black and silver. We will look at that um, because it's a new product this year. We decided to focus on the product and the performance rather than just perfectly the aesthetics. And by the way, I think all black does look pretty sweet, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that um, as the seasons go on. So Ishan from O45, uh, he's asking, are any of these parts waterproof? So water game? <laughs> so uh, no. <laughs> okay. Dang it. All right. And then uh, Luigi29371 asks, will there be official support for encoders or external sensors that integrate well with the Spark Max? The answer to that is yes. Um, more information is going to come out closer towards the FRC season. So, uh... Okay. All right. Uh, next up, Sarin Jalal. He, they're asking, um, is there like a ultrasonic distance sensor as opposed to the light-based one? So we have looked at this. Uh, we are going to stick with the, uh, we're not launching an ultrasonic sensor this season. Um, there are plenty of good options out there for ultrasonic um, mm -hmm. as is. Um, we like the uh, time of flight mainly because of its size and form factor. Um, yeah. We know there's some things about like, hey, how well does it read on the, the polycarb of the field and things like that. But um, we're not going to do an ultrasonic this year. Okay, right. and then our final live audience question is from Gymnast544. Are there any chance of rev shirts being sold? Ooh, uh, we talk about this a lot. Uh, there is a chance, um, but I will also say that there is a good chance that we will be giving away some this year with swag. So if you see us at an event, mm. um, um, that's something we're definitely uh, going to do. All, All right. right. So I guess it's time to drop for the third giveaway and talk about some closing stuff. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and draw. Once again, Mechanum was the keyword uh, to get in for the 75 millimeter uh, Mechanum set. Uh, pretty sweet, guys. Like, you, like we'd love to hear, by the way, whoever wins this and get this, uh, love to hear some feedback of what you think about the Mechanum wheels uh, as well, too. And we'd love to talk about that on air and what your experience was uh, with it. I'm sure Rev would love to hear the feedback as well, too. Sure. Uh, but be really cool stuff for that. So Mechanum was the keyword. A couple of announcements to make. Don't forget, uh, hey, FTC kickoff is coming up really soon. Um, uh, I know uh, Greg will probably talk about it. He's got uh, p perhaps a few things coming up uh, with the FTC kickoff. Uh, Fun is actually partnering with First Nevada, uh, who will be doing a 72-hour uh, build blitz uh, from uh, University of uh, Nevada, Reno. Sorry, University of Nevada, Reno and University of Nevada, Las Vegas uh, will be uh, streaming. Uh, so you can go and check that out. They'll be creating a lot of separate videos and then also... Uh, a lot of, uh, of course, live streams with a daily uh, live show where you can ask all the questions about what they're creating, what they're building. Lots of cool stuff with that uh, as well. Uh, but the keyword, once again, Mechanum. Uh, and uh, the winner for that is going to be it's probably going to be rigged. Oh, no please. subscribers Drum won today. What? Uh, Scandal <laughs> B225. Very scandalous, should be asked me, that no subscribers won. But Scandal B, congratulations. <laughs> you have won the Mechanum wheel set. Uh, so yeah, everybody's uh, everybody's unsubscribing. I tell you, this is how <laughs> this is how it ends uh, here on Fun. This is this is where uh, we no longer allow live and independent because all our subscribers leave. But yeah, subs put in your rigged emotes. We didn't rig <laughs> rigged like oil. Perfect. So, uh, but congratulations. Also a reminder: uh, make sure you check. Uh, uh, funds uh, uh, YouTube page because this will be uploaded on there afterwards. We'd love to have you uh, check that out uh, and learn more about Reb uh, products as well too. So lots of cool stuff uh, coming up here on Fun. Yeah, and Greg from all of us at Fun, we would like to thank you for taking the time to be on the show and talk about some of the new offerings by Reb for the Skystone Challenge. Before we hop off, is there anything you want to let the audience know about? Yeah, I got. I have one really big one. So for everyone who didn't win, um, one of the things Reb is doing this year. We are giving away um, a team sponsorship in every single FTC region in the entire of FTC. So um, it's a we're it's the first year that we are sponsored directly sponsoring FTC teams, um, and uh, this is kind of a nice thank you to the community. This is a grant uh, that's going to be good for product on our website. It's going to be a big enough grant that you'll be able to get mechanum wheels and ultra planetaries and a bunch of other stuff. So if you go to our website. Um, and uh, go under sponsorship under FTC and competition. Um, I'll make sure I give Tyler the link. I should have done this before. Um, fill out your application. You have until the end of September to fill out the application. Um, but uh, there you go, right there. If you click that, uh, 
FTC. Oh, sorry. If you actually, sorry, Tyler. If you go all the way over to the right side to the about or uh, the top bar. Sorry, this is like live navigating a website. I'm sure this is riveting, riveting streaming. Um, we'll make sure you get the link on our website. Uh, we'll throw it to the front page of our website on our main slider tomorrow. Um, but if you sign up, sign up your team. We're going to give away sponsorship in every single region. In addition to the, uh, in addition to just kind of getting some uh, rev credit, uh, there may be some extra special goodies that only those teams uh, get access to. Uh, awesome. Direct, direct support line maybe. Uh, some, some opportunity to test some new products and things like that. On that page, if you click sponsorship and click FTC Teams, you'll, uh, you'll find it. There you go, Tyler. All right. So again, <laughs> thank you all for the subscriptions and followers that we received today. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. Let's bring on Tyler to read off who plays their support today. Yeah, big thanks once again to Greg for uh, for taking the time after, uh, of course, a huge product release and lots going on with Reb, I'm sure, uh, as well, too. So do uh, quickly here, uh, people supported during this stream. Thanks again, uh, once again, to uh, I uh, I Don't Night Enough uh, with the Tier 1 sub, Kunal King, nine months of support, Turbocharge, 14615 with the Tier 1 sub, a uh, few bits coming in uh, from the Pigeon, Lukewarm, and Meeper, Pigeon with the Tier 1 sub, Ponderson 64, Tier 1 sub, Meeper 31, Tier 1 sub, SD Gamer, Tier 1, uh, XWO, 15 months of support. Brian Sachs, 135, three months of support. Lukewarm with the tier one sub. Jar Gaming with the tier one sub. We got a few more. Holy cow, I got to scroll up. Uh, <laughs> TL White, 33, tier one sub. Hard Copy with the tier one. Uh, Fun FTC Nathan, 17 months support. Thanks a lot, buddy. And thanks again to everybody who helped support uh, Fun uh, between uh, today and yesterday. Uh, lots of support coming in. If we missed you, I apologize. Let me know and we'll make sure we read you off in a future show. Awesome. Again, thank you all for the support, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Live. If you want to stay connected with what Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fun FTC, and also join our Discord. On behalf of myself, Ashray, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support Fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.